The Girl with the Curls. How Mary Pickford Changed the Film Industry. Mary Pickford was a pioneer in actress, director, and producer during the silent film era. Her groundbreaking approach to filmmaking influenced a future generation of actors and directors. Mary is well known for her shortness and her beautiful golden curls. She was born in Toronto, Canada on April 8, 1892, to parents John Charles and Charlotte Smith. But her name wasn't always Mary Pickford. She was born Gladys Louise Smith. Gladys had a very rough childhood. Her dad had a drinking problem and left her when she was about three years old. When she was six, her father John had an accident at his work. He stayed with Gladys and her family until he died. First of all, I don't think she would have maybe even had a career had she not had been so kind of frightened from poverty. And the family was in poverty, so their mother, Charlotte, rented out a room in their house to the manager of the coming stock company. The manager suggested that Gladys and her sister, Lottie, be cast in a play. Charlotte took his advice, and a little after that, Gladys made her stage debut at the Princess Theater, playing two roles in The Silver King at age eight. Soon, her brother John, Gladys, and her sister Charlotte began touring around the country and performing plays. At the suggestion of the theater producer, David Blasco, Gladys Smith became Mary Pickford, her brother John became Jack Pickford, and her sister Charlotte became Lottie Pickford. After her and her siblings were in Warrens of Virginia, they became unemployed, and her mother Charlotte said that Mary should seek work in the new median of moving pictures. On April 20th, 1909, Mary appeared in her first film at age 16, playing a small role as a 10-year-old girl directed by D.W. Griffith, and signed on to the Biograph Film Company, earning $10 a day. Mary then met a fellow Biograph actor named Owen Moore, soon to be her future husband. Four days after that, she got her first main role in a Biograph short. On August 21st, 1909, Mary is singled out in an article about the short They Would Elope. In January 1910, Mary Pickford becomes the new Biograph girl. So, but people would go to the movies and they would start to find people that they liked and they would associate them with certain companies. So at Biograph, there was Marion Leonard, there was Florence Lawrence and Mary Pickford and no one knew who their names were, but they would start to like them. So they came up with the, the name, the Biograph Girl. Soon after that, Mary left Griffith and signed on with Carl Lemon's Independent Moving Picture Company, IMP for short, for $175 per week. And a month after that, Mary married Owen Moore in a secret ceremony in New Jersey. A few months after, Mary left IMP to go work for the Majestic Film Company for $225 a week. After a few films with them, she switched back over to the Biograph Film Company. In December 1912, Mary got casted A Good Little Devil, which will later become one of her well-known films. In 1913, Mary signed a one-year contract with Zucker at Famous Players for $500 a week. On March 20, 1914, Variety declared that little Mary Pickford comes into her own and that she had struck another feature of her movie crown. At this time, Mary's fame soared and she earned $1,000 a week. Now she was the highest paid actress. A little after that, Mary got the nickname America's Sweetheart by a movie theater owner. In January 1915, Mary's salary doubled to $2,000. In David Belasco's 1915 photo play article, Mary is often to referred to, to as the queen of the movies. In November, Mary met Douglas Fairbanks, who she did many movies with. After many successful movies, Zucker raised Mary's pay to $10,000 a week. In December of 1916, Mary and Douglas Fairbanks began their love affair. Then, in 1917, she filmed Poor Little Rich Girl. In 1918, Pickford Fairbanks and Charlie Chaplin promoted the Liberty Bonds for World War I, a few months after Fairbanks divorced his first wife. On February 5, 1919, Pickford and Fairbanks, Chaplin and D.W. Griffiths from, formed the United Artists Corporation. 
In March of 1920, Pickford divorced Owen Moore, just a few days after she married Douglas Fairbanks. Then, in 1920, she filmed Little Lord Fauntleroy. This was a technological film advancement, for Mary played two roles who had to kiss. A year later, Mary and Douglas opened the Pickford Fairbanks studio. Then, in October of 1927, Mary released My Best Girl, her last silent film. The next year, Mary's mother, Charlotte, her biggest supporter, died of breast cancer. Then, in June, Mary cut off her world-famous curls. Two years later, she won the Best Oscar Award for her work on Coquette. In 1933, Mary's brother, Jack, died of alcoholism. Mary filmed her final film, Secrets. Soon after, on January 10th of 1936, she divorced Douglas. In December, Mary lost the last of her family. Lottie Pickford died of a heart attack. The next year, she wed her third and final husband, Charles Rogers, and they adopted two children, Ronald and Roxanne. In February of 1956, Mary sold her shares of United Artists for $3 million. The same year, she founded the Mary Pickford Foundation. Twenty years later, Mary received an honorary Oscar in her home of Pickford. That's wonderful. You made me very, very happy. And thank you. Finally, on May 29th, 1979, Mary died at Santa Monica Hospital following a stroke. The impact she had on on movies and the industry is the fact that from an early place in her career, she wanted, to, she believed in herself and she wanted to be treated fairly. She wanted to make money. She wanted to have control and um, she was ambitious. And being a woman, being young, being uneducated and being poor did not stand in her way. Though Mary's fame died with silent film, she impacted many future Hollywood actresses to come. She pushed through poverty and a society of men to get what she wanted. Over the course of her life, Mary Pickford crossed many frontiers. She was one of the first ever movie stars and the first actress to become a millionaire. Mary was the driving force behind so many groundbreaking movies and companies. She, along with many other groundbreaking women, made Hollywood. Hollywood.